everyone to the next lecture on unit number 5 optimal power flow analysis so in this particular lecture we are going to study about the economic dispatch and linear programming method so this is professor vishal mitre from department of electrical engineering bharti vidyapeet deemed to be university college of engineering pune so in the previous lecture we have seen about the optimal power flow analysis <coughs> constraints, objective functions and the methodologies along with uh, the methods that are applicable for solving the optimum power flow solution. So in this particular lecture we are going to see in the last part is the economic dispatch and the linear programming method. So let us see the contents that we are going to cover. We are going to study the economic dispatch for a particular power output, the input output characteristics, how to obtain it for a particular application of thermal generating power plant then how to calculate this input output characteristics parameters then I'm considering as example solved example on economic dispatch for this thermal unit then we are going to study the incremental factor which is going to be applicable for economic dispatch how that incremental factor whether it is equal not equal that we will be considering Incremental concept we are going to correlate it with the power output calculation and at the end we are going to study about the linear programming method for economic dispatch. So after watching this video do like, share or subscribe and whatever doubt you are having you can post it in after viewing this video so that I can come back to you and answer to that question. So let us quickly go back to the economic dispatch part so economic dispatch the aim of the economic dispatch is going to be in terms of economy for the real power generation so the real power generation is going to be term in terms of the fuel consumption is the one thing and the second is the operating cost so both these has to be minimum and this can be obtained by calculating the power output from the generating unit that is going to be satisfied for the load demand requirement under certain constraint condition so this method which we consider when we have economic dispatch, classic economic dispatch with security constraints neglected, this is called as classical method. Otherwise, <coughs> when we consider this line security constraint, then it is a part of security uh, economic dispatch. So that is the other part that is the we are not considering here. We are considering the classic economic dispatch. So the fundamental of the economic dispatch problem is to identify the input and output parameters that are going to be considered for a power generating unit so in this next lecture we will next part we are going to study the input output characteristics of the thermal gener thermal power plant so the inputs will be the hydroelectric head will for hydroelectric power generation the head will be the parameter that we have to consider but the things which we are going to require is almost on the similar uh, lines that is where we are considering for thermal power generation so the input and output that we are going to require is going to be the fuel consumption function or operating cost function now this input function is basically depending on the boiler the turbine and the generator so whatever is the input which is going to be going to the boiler its output is going to be the steam that steam is going as input to the turbine and then from turbine and generator set from which we are getting the electricity so this input is going to be the unit of fuel consumption rather whatever is the incremental cost related to that fuel consumption that is going to depend on the type of boiler used and the turbine that we have considered for the generation of that electric power the output of the generating unit is going to be pg that we are defining it by pg so this PG is nothing but you can see over here this is the value of PG that is going to be the megawatt net power output of the unit so in along with to the fuel consumption cost we are going to consider the operating cost now this operating cost includes the labor cost maintenance cost the fuel transportation cost and to maintain all this individually is becoming a very complicated that is why we are doing the function of the output so these are fixed we are considering it as fixed proportion for the operating cost only the variable is going to be the incremental cost for <coughs> the power generation so it can be observed from the input output characteristics of generation that we require the minimum and maximum capacities of the generating unit that we can be obtained from the historical data which we are can have the record for that data for generated data 
so that data we can have the minimum and maximum values along with the fuel consumption data or the rate of fuel it is being consumed to have the generation now there are certain limits we can impose certain limitations that which is the major contribution part so the minimum load limitation of the boiler are generally caused by fuel combustion stability and the values these values may be different depending on the type of boiler and the type of fuel that is being consumed so the combustion stability fuel combustion stability is not going to be fixed it is going to be variable real depending upon the type of design that we consider so it is contributing to 25 to 50 percent of the design capacity which is you can say this is going to be the heart of the system after that the second step is or the less prior which is there as compared to this boiler and fuel is going to be the turbine and the generator unit which is going to be the inherent steam generator constraints that constraints that the generator and turbine set can have that is contributing to 10 to 15 percent of the design capacity <coughs> so the maximum power output of the generation unit is determined by the design capacity or the rate capacity from the boiler turbine or generator so the input output characteristics as we have seen is not fixed so every instant of time how much power is being generated by consumption of that amount of fuel per hour it is going to be the non-linear characteristics so for having the non-linear characteristics most widely quadratic function is used which can see that it is mentioned by the equation f equal to a pg square plus b pg plus c so this a b c are going to be the coefficients of the input output characteristics out of which c is a constant and can be the fuel consumption of the generating unit operation without power output so let us see the calculation parts further so we are going to consider the parameters that we require first is going to be obtained from the experiments of the generating unit efficiency how much is the efficiency second is the historic data of the generating unit operation most of the time we are going to prefer this data which we are going to have and the third is the design data of the generating unit provided by the manufacturer which may be changed up according to the operational conditions <coughs> so let us consider so these characteristics can be obtained for this power is going to be the power uh, generation and f is going to the fuel consumption for generating the amount of power pk so let us see the calculation procedure let fk and pk be obtained from the statistical data where kb will be the values of 1 to n depending upon the power outputs we are going to have and the fuel curve is going to be the quadratic function so obtain the values of a b and c that are coefficients we can obtain it by using the following procedure so equation 4.3 we can see that it is delta fk that is the small increment in the fuel consumption that is apk square plus bpk plus c minus fk now to have this solution we can have the least square approximation method so for which we need to have is uh, taking the square of this <coughs> Uh, 4.3 equation so we get this obtain we obtain this particular equation so it is not that complicated we are just taking the square of it where we have taken the square then <coughs> the necessary condition for the extreme value of objective function we take is the first derivative with respect to the independent variable abc now first derivative here means we are going to take the partial derivative of this particular equation we are going to take partial derivative with respect to independent variables a, b and c and equate it equal to zero. So these are the three equations that we obtain in terms of partial derivative. So these four, three equations, from these three equations we get is what is pk square a plus summation of pk b plus nc equal to summation of fk. So this is the fuel consumption equal to the coefficients in terms of the power consumption. This is one equation. Second equation we can have is pk cube. So here we are having the third order equation and this is going to be the fourth order, first order, fourth order equation. Sorry. So all these three equations are obtained from these three values when you are multiplying this. So this is going to be, this equation is substituted over here. Two is common, so it gets cancelled. So this equation is applicable for pk cube and from this equation we get the power of pk4. So to illustrate this, more in detail let us see an example there, are, there is a generator which is having the capacity in the range of 150 to 200 and we are having the four sample data which were having 0 0.405 0 0.379 0 0.368 and 0.399 btu per megawatt that is british thermal unit per megawatt and corresponding output power is 150 megawatt 170 185 and 200 megawatt respectively so from this data we can uh, we are having four sample data so we can have the four values for this calculation so fuel consumption is calculated directly 
by 0.405 as the unit you can see b2 it megawatt r per megawatt r and the power output is 150 megawatt so just by multiplying these two equations we obtain the third row so this is going to be the fuel consumption so let us quickly go into the calculation one by one take the summation of the power output 150 170 185 200 so we get 705 <coughs> now is the second equation we require is the pk square as we can see here pk cube pk raised to 4 so i am calculating the square take the square and do the summation cube summation and then power of the four summation so we'll have four values and then this fk is going to the fuel consumption which is obtained in the last row so take the summation of all those values we get the value then according to the other factors that is what we are going to require is summation of fk into pk and summation of fk p fk p k square that values we are going to multiply and take the summation we are going to get these values so substituting these values <coughs> after obtaining in these three equation 4.8 4.9 and 4.10 we get three equations so there are three unknowns and three equations which we can solve simultaneously and obtain the values of abc to reframe it into a form of quadratic equation so this is the quadratic function of the fuel consumption for that particular generator which is in the limit of 150 to 200 so by considering the value of this pg so we can see that the fuel consumption is directly proportional to the power generation sorry it is vice versa power generation is directly proportional to the fuel consumption and it can be obtained from this particular equation because fuel consumption data we are not having but from the power consumption we can power generation we can calculate how much is the fuel consumed from this particular equation now let us go to the next part that is economic dispatch with increment equal incremental rate now suppose there is one generator there are two generators connected to the one one bus and through that bus we have to satisfy the demand load demand that is electrical load pd so both these two generating units are f1 function of pg1 and f2 pg2 so the total power consumption is going to be fed from the two generating units to the load which is going to be the demand so let us assume that there is no limitation on both the generation they can operate in any other condition <coughs> so as per the economic dispatch problem we are going to minimize this function so it is going to be minimum f f1 pg1 plus f2 pg2 so it is going to be the summation of pg1 plus pg2 equal to the power demand so according to the first principle derivative of equal in increments we can say that these two has to be equal rates so df1 by d uh, pg1 and df2 by dpg2 will be equal to lambda note down this lambda is not the lagrange's multiplier because it is a variable that we have considered so this df i by pg dpg i is going to be the incremental rate of generating unit which is which is corresponding to the slope of the input output characteristics so suppose if the incremental cost is not equal and there is some difference in the incremental cost like generation one is reduce, having the reduced power <coughs> by consuming more amount of fuel uh, sorry less amount of fuel the total output remains the same if the generator one is reducing the output power by delta p the generator two will increase the output by delta p so there is somewhere balance between the two generators provided generator one is having less power so it will have less fuel consumption generator two is having more amount of power so it will have more amount of fuel consumption so which we get this particular relation and we can have the change total savings in the fuel consumption that is delta f by equating these terms which will be greater than zero note down that if we are taking incremental cost equal in that case the incremental fuel rate will be zero there is no going to be no savings in the fuel to illustrate this let us consider an example suppose these two equations are obtained this is obtained from the historical data as we have done the calculation for this particular equation likewise from the historical data whatever data we are having for any particular generator or generators we can obtain this quadratic equation and that equation is represented here so let us take these two equations f1 and f2 and suppose we are to deliver or to satisfy the demand of 500 megawatt so let us follow the steps lambda 1 we have to take the derivative of function 1 with respect to pg2 pg1 so this is the derivative part lambda 1 is again we are calculating df2 by dvg2 uh, just a minor change here this is going to be lambda 2 just note down this now these two equations are equal as per the equal principle criteria so lambda 1 will be equal to lambda 2 so equate both the equation will get a relation between pg1 and pg2 and as we have seen that it has to be 500 megawatt demand satisfied so pg1 plus pg2 will be equal to 500 so two equations two unknowns we get the value of pg1 and pg2 so here pg2 is greater 
as compared to PG1. So this is going to have more power. So it is having more fuel consumption. This is having less power and having less fuel consumption. So here we are having no constraints. That is why we are obtaining some different values. So incremental principle for power output calculation. Now here the equations are similar. This 4.22 and 4.33. These two equations are similar as we have seen in previous steps, previous methods. Only thing is this particular limitations that we are going to have on the power output characteristics. But at the initial stage also this we have to neglect as you can see here in the step one we are neglecting this particular equation distribute the power among the units according to the incremental uh, incremental principle and check for the limits if it is greater than pgk max if it is greater than maximum value consider the maximum value if it is less than the minimum value consider the minimum value and to avoid the violation of the negative load you consider this particular p dash dk term which is for k equal to 1 to nk so this is going to be very helpful and at the end, we are going to have the power balance equation, which is going to be the generator power equal to the demand power plus <coughs> the violated unit by the load if there is any. So you can use this equation, either this equation. If they are well within the equal inequality constraints are met, then it is okay. If not, then go back to step number one and calculate the same procedure. So this is the case for the economic dispatch. Now let us go on to the last part that is the linear programming method. So in linear programming method, as we have seen that the objective function is mainly the non-linear function. So to convert that non-linear function into linear function, we have to have this linearization of objective function. So consider the initial operating point of the generator PGI naught. So the non-linear function can be expressed by using the Taylor series expansion. So we have this Taylor series expansion, which is approximately equal to F1, Fi PGI naught plus derivative with respect to pgi at pgi not delta pgi that is we are expressing in terms of b and c constant so where b and c constant have mentioned the values here and we are have obtaining this particular difference that is going to be the difference between the two values so delta pgi will be pgi minus pgi not the current value minus the initial value so here we have to have the initial operating limit so let us see the steps for having the linear programming method. So for the linear programming method, we need to have the iterative technique, which is called as successive linear programming method. So the solution for obtaining this linear programming method is that select the set of initial control variables that is going to have the initial values which we are defining, solve the load flow problem, obtain the feasible solution that is going to have maintain the power flow quality equality constraints linearize the objective function that is going to be non-linear which we are obtaining in step two linearize the function and inequality constraints around the power flow solution and then formulate the linear programming problem then solve that linear programming problem obtain the incremental value for a delta pgi and with the help of this delta pgi update the control of variable by pgi k plus one plus pgi k plus delta pgi note down this key k is not the power it is going to be the <coughs> number of iteration iteration which iteration is going on obtain the power flow equation again and update the control variables check for the convergence if this delta pgi is well below the tolerance that we are specifying then it will converge otherwise go back to step three and perform the same number of calculations so this is going to be very beneficial from the calculation point of view that is why we consider it in economic dispatch so that's it for this particular session uh, if you are having any doubt you can clarify your doubts so that's it we have covered all the topics related to optimal power flow analysis the opf solution methods then the methods uh, or the loss coefficient sensitivity factors along with that we have studied the economic dispatch and linear programming method so that is the end of this unit number five in the next lecture we will start with power system security and contingency analysis analysis that is the last part of unit number six thank you